thank you. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Um, as the presenter said, uh, my name is Jorge Martinez. Uh, I'm working on the emergency division, the GIS unit of the World Food Program uh, here in Rome. So the trip was easy, two hours, quick. And I'm collaborating with the RAM, Research Assessment and Monitoring uh, Division, which is the Climate and Earth Observation Unit. So this is like a side project between two divisions. And the global pro program manager is Amit, and Valentin is in charge of like, the Earth ob Observation and Data Engineering. So let's start with like a, a, to give a little bit of context of why, why we have developed this software or the, or the project itself. And what happens is that constantly we're receiving like a request about uh, emergencies like floods, uh, tropical cyclones, earthquake information. And usually uh, that, that those requests from, come from country offices and governments which has like a low income and no like a strict or like a well-defined access to the information regarding satellite information, regarding uh, tropical cyclone wind buffers, how many people were affected and so on. So we come with like a multiple challenges and one of the challenges is that Earth observation data requires technical skills to access and use it. For example, the data that comes from GDAX requires an API, which the way we do request for the data is different from the data that you need for earthquake information. Or the rainfall information or, this, or the rasters come from satellites requires a different way to access it. Uh, the second one is like uh, governments in low and middle countries uh, have limited resources. As I mentioned, not uh, all the countries have like, uh, enough budgeting for having a GIS, uh, GIS unit inside the agency or even inside the country offices, or even the resources in terms of like, infrastructure, like a server to access all the information automatically. It's not, like, uh, it's not, uh, it's not easy for everyone. And data and risk and vulnerability are spread across systems, which means like, uh, not, uh, there's not like, a single source of uh, information to access what you need or what you want. Uh, it, it, for, for us, it reminds like different opportunities, uh, which means like uh, technical assistance to governments uh, is a key modality to WFP works. So, uh, WFP as an organization aims to connect with different governments in order to improve the logistic and improve the performance of what WFP usually does. does. Uh, climate risk analysis and vulnerability info improves targeting, so you can uh, with a better analysis and with better tools designed, you can uh, specifically go uh, to the specific place or in, to reach the specific people, amount of people. And faster access to information, uh, which is like, it transformed to like less impact, so you can know specifically what you want. Based on that, the challenges and opportunities, we come with like uh, three main milestones. So the first one is to like collect, visualize, and generate time series analysis. Uh, for different climate indicators. So we can pick like drought, vegetation, and rainfall. Uh, there's, a, there's like a need of, in terms of like a infrastructure, like a single platform that would work for like multiple countries because many of the data is like a country dependent and context dependent. For example, usually in the Caribbean, the data that is like mostly requested or comes from like tropical cyclones and rainfall, while in some other countries, drought is the main indicator through for for do analysis or the data that they need. And connection to external data sources, which means that not all the data that WFP generates uh, is going to be served and visualized inside WFP. It is generated inside WFP, which means that we have other data sources outside, like USGS, GDAX, uh, armed conflict information. We can connect that information and visualize and, and, visualize and do the analysis. So for the first one, we come from a platform uh, uh, many people, many have heard of it, is Open Data Cube. So Open Data Cube is like a tool that is designed to uh, collect indexed information in order to, be, to run analysis inside the same platform. It's like an uh, online web tool, so people get the data. You can easily get the information you need regarding satellite information. And then you uh, is index, uh, is index the data. And then you can use it for running analysis, or you can use uh, to serve that information as a web service. Uh, it has its own APIs. This is like the, the main goals that why we, we decided to use Open Data Cube, which is uh, provide internal platform for analysis. Uh, it has like an inside Jupyter notebook array, and uh, the data is like accessed like publicly. 
Uh, in terms of like the, the infrastructure, we collect data from NASA, from Fl Climate Hazard Center, we collect data from um, server modis, and then we get that information inside Open Data Cube. Let me, can I use this? No. Okay. Okay, we, collect, we get the information and we de index everything inside the Open Data Cube. Uh, and this, this data is going to be served for like different uh, business and application services. Uh, inside WFP's database and AIMS, uh, the, government and the government one and the one that I want to talk about after this is uh, PRISM. Uh, also, we can connect to S3 services. We can uh, get the data. Open Data Cube is, uh, has like a, a plugin called the Data Cube OWS. So you can serve that information as a OGC API, which is, uh, supports WMS and WCS requests for rasters. And we can provide an analysis interface which uh, people inside, there's a Jupyter notebook so people can access and do the analysis if they need that. Uh, in terms of like infrastructure and, and the data that we manage, uh, we, uh, we're using like rainfall information, vegetation information, which is NDVI, uh, temperature, which is land surface temperature, and the anomalies, which is an uh, analysis made, made for that. We currently have 1.2 terabytes of uh, raw data and 1.5 terabytes of derived data. Um, this data is accessible through OGC requests, so if you have a, if you have a platform like a, a RGIS Online that accepts like WMS requests, you can connect and visualize the tiles. And this is an example of like the, the derived data that we use, which is, uh, this is called a, a filter, and basically the data that comes from MODIS is not like a, it's not good enough for metallic analysis, so we use a filter and process, uh, you, we process the data and generate the output, which is a filter information. Um, this, for MODIS, is like the, the, the biggest challenge for us because is the, the tile has like a 1,200 times 1,200 times like 980 pixels, which is like a big and takes a while. And we filter three products with one kilometer's resolutions, and we use a IWS Fargate for this. Uh, so yeah, this is like the, the, the data that we use, which is the, we fulfill like this first milestone, which is regarding to collect, visualize, and generate time series data. We take data from different data sources, uh, most of them are rasters, and then we analyze as we process it, and the data is going to be served. But for the second milestone, which is the platform for multiple countries and connection to external data sources, we have developed an, a front-end tool, which is called PRISM. So the idea of the PRISM is that you can collect data not only for uh, regarding the hazard from the open data cube or the humanitarian data cube, which is the mention that we got, but we can get information from the government, which is regarding vulnerability or exposure data. Uh, not necessarily can come from the government, but also can come from like a, directly in, in raw data, but you can use like forms like a, a COBO forms or, open, or, or ODK forms and put it into PRISM so you can run analysis and then you can uh, measure what you, yeah, fulfill the goal that you, that you want or what you need. Uh, it's designed as a tool for a government institutions. Uh, it's open source so each government can, uh, you can set up your own instance of PRISM so you can define what, what is the country, which are the layers that you need and what's the information you want to displace and which type of analysis that you want to generate. So, um, and yeah, it can catalyze institutional data sharing because uh, we can, the, the analysis that you can do inside uh, Open Data Cube or you, that you can do on PRISM, you can download and you can share it freely. So, yeah, this is like the first data source that we use, uh, which is like the output from the Open Data Cube. It's like a, the results and the analysis are fed uh, inside the platform. It's like a visualized as a OGC service WMS request. And we got information that is placed previously, like the rainfall anomalies, uh, vegetation index, surface temperature. So you can uh, visualize it on the platform. We can also have uh, the results from uh, forms collected by the government or like raw data information is classified by admin level. In this case, it depends on the country. Some countries use admin level three, sometimes uh, use admin level two. And then we just uh, get that information, get the results or indicators, and then we just put into the platform so they can be visualized. And finally, uh, emergencies. in the emergency division, we have a platform called ADAM, which is an automatically, automated disaster alert system. Um, basically, it's when there's, a, when there's an earthquake or when there's a tropical cyclone, it alerts uh, the people subscribed that, that that incident happened. 
and uh, it happened in, in a given area, uh, how many people were affected, uh, how, many, uh, how close are the country offices or the warehouses in, the, in that city. And yeah, we have uh, integrated that. We just uh, got the, the information regarding the boundaries and the polygons. And then we just serve that through GeoServer as a WMS request, and then Prism just it takes charge of like visualization. Uh, the WMS request, they can, um, the GeoServer takes advantage of that we, cannot, we can get also the raw data itself, like the WFS, and then we can just run analysis for example, how many, how many people were affected. I can show that on the demo uh, on, a, on a bit. And uh, this is open source solution, it's fully open source. We have the front end, which is built on TypeScript, React, and MapLibre. Um, uh, the API, we have a back end API, which is it takes charge of like downloading the data and running the analysis that are needed. And their outputs are like the uh, return to the, to the front end. Uh, it's built on Python and Flask. Uh, you can use Docker, it has a Docker container for the Docker image for that. And we use GDAL for, for running the analysis. And the data services provided, uh, if you can connect most of the data services that, ha that accept OGC requests, uh, we use PostgreSQL for, like a post for managing the data and GeoServer for serv serving it. Uh, it's currently, there are like 20 contributors and it's MIT license. And yeah, it's a flexible tool. Um, basically, you can connect multiple data sources. As I mentioned, if you have anything that serves, uh, that reads, uh, that, uh, I mean, that accepts WMS requests, you can get the data out of the tiles. Uh, easily overlap and explore data layers. You can have WMS data and you can, be, and you can overlap with uh, information from the government so you can make a, a better analysis. Uh, the geospatial API, you can get an, it's a sonar statistic aggregation. You can, get, um, you can see for each admin level what is the rainfall information or the drought information. Uh, you can intercept layers, uh, which is going to be, I'm going to demo it regarding the tropical cyclones and handles compute heavy operations. Uh, this is the part that we are like, uh, we're currently improving, which is the alerts, alerting system. So users uh, want to know when something, uh, if I give an admin tree, uh, gets a lot of, uh, it's going to have like a lot of rainfall. It's going to be, uh, it's going to rain a lot in a given admin tree, so you can alert the, the people subscribed to get to notify that in that area specifically is going to rain a lot. Uh, the new layers and launch analysis, yeah, exactly. So when the alert happens, you can run the analysis that you need to measure how many people were affected, uh, which are like possible, um, which are the possible areas affected, and so on. And yeah, notify and send the users. And mostly data sources are like a GeoServer, ODC, GeoJSONs. Uh, you can uh, it's usually classified by admin level. And the key benefits of Prism is that the, the front end is serverless. You can just, it's, in, it's built in React, so you can make the bundle, and then you can serve as a static file, or yeah, as a, st a static HTML and JavaScript uh, using Nginx in your server. You can deploy to, to search or Vercel as, a, as, a HTML, as an HTML. A uh, sure backend, independent front end, uh, you can have different instances of Prism by country. So you can have two files, I'm gonna show it right now. You can have two files. One is a layers, which specify the list of the layers. And the second one is the information of the country, the bounding box of the country, the zoom level that you want the data, which are the tiles that you want. Uh, configuration, no, no coding skills required, as, as I mentioned, two files, layers, JSON, uh, layers, and the prism configuration file. Uh, adaptable to local context, we're working on the localization. Uh, so you can, uh, it's gonna be reachable for like a country, at a country level. Um, yeah, no permissions requiring fully transparent, transparent. Everything is on GitHub, so you can uh, get download the file. You can build your own instance. You can install React. You can run the Docker images and so on. So yeah, uh, these are the links. Um, I'm gonna close this and show the. What? The demos. Okay, thank you. Can I use? Yeah. Which time, what time, which time is this? Up. Okay. Perfect. So this is like the, the, the repository. This is the Prism Frontend repository. Uh, as I mentioned, it's built on React. And this is like the API. The API is, uh, has a Docker image and it's like built on, on Python and Flask. 
Uh, the main thing that I want to show here is like the configuration. So these are the multiple countries that we have PRISM deployments. Uh, not necessarily every deploy every country here is like official deployment of country of, of PRISM. It's just like for demoing and displaying. And as you see, let's pick one. Uh, okay, let's pick uh, Tajikistan. There's like two main files. The first one is layers.json, which contains like the configuration of the boundaries that are going to be used. Uh, also, if I search for WMS, this is like the data that is reading from Open Data Cube. And the other one is the Prism configuration, which contains like a, the the all requests, the map, how, how we're going to center the map, which is the center of the country, and the category. So you can configure uh, the rainfall information is going to uh, it's going to be on a on a specific category. So what happens is that uh, internally when you run the, when you deploy Prism, uh, it creates like a dictionary per country and then based on environment variable uh, of that country, you can, it, Prism will try to render all the layers and all the configuration according to that environment variable. So it's basically like, like a dictionary, Prism loads, takes the country you need, loads the layers, loads the configuration, loads all, everything that it needs, it's needed. So you can see here, there are like two main deployments. Uh, First, uh, this is like a demo of Mozambique, uh, and this is like a demo of, oh, can it change? Okay. So yeah, I can, there's gonna be a, like a demo of Colombia, but I cannot see the link, it's like a wrong link. But in general, uh, it's, it's a different country, it's a different list of categories, and it's a different list of layers that's gonna be displayed. So here I'm displaying the NDVI information that comes from Open Data Cube, but I can display here information regarding rainfall. rainfall information. But I can also read vector data, which is, uh, that I have collected here. I don't see it here. No. Okay, sorry, resolution. The tropical storms data. So you can here visualize all the tropical storm da data collected for uh, Mozambique. Let me show here. And so this is like the information regarding tropical cyclones. There are like two wind buffers. There's like a list of points where the, the episodes have been uh, generated. And this is the live stream, which is the path of the, of the tropical storm. And PRISM has the ability to run some analysis. So if I want to run this a type of analysis, which is exposure analysis, takes a while, sorry. Can I change, change the link for this? Just remove this. So yeah, uh, this is the result of the analysis. Uh, what it does is that the front end of Prism connects to the back end, gets the information regarding the tropical cyclone, all these uh, geojson, which is the wind buffers, the points, and the lines. And we take the boundaries that are also fed from the front end. So these are like the boundaries. And then we just initially do the intersection between uh, between the admin boundaries, in this case is admin tree, which one, which each of the polygon wind buffers. We take the intersection and then we pass that to the zonal statistic analysis, which is the raster of population. Then we can see for each uh, for each polygon, we can see how many people were affected. In this case, in this example, you can see the this, the same city but with different wind buffers intersection that the people that were affected. Uh, it has another type of analysis which you can measure the rainfall information and then you can compare with other types of uh, data, for example, total population, and then you run the analysis. So you can measure, okay, in this area there's going to be probably a, a precipitation of a high precipitation and the population affected is going to be this. So you can do uh, some sort of like a, a preparedness and then you can uh, allocate resources to that area, a specific area. So that's more like a, in terms of like efficiently. So yeah. It's not like a different, it's not, it's, it's not like a, all the country or the whole city, it's just a specific area. So you can run the analysis and allocate the resources to that area. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking I'm out of time, so 
I'm, I'm going to stop for this demo. If people are interested, I can show the demo for the other countries, for, for Mozambique and, oh, this is Mozambique, but I wanted to show demo of Colombia and, and, and Cuba. Um, yeah, thank you.